Hey guys, welcome back. The next plugin we are looking at is Wolfram. So let's look at what this plugin can do. We have already installed it and I've enabled this plugin. Before we go into the demo of the plugin, let's understand what this plugin can do. So Wolfram ChatGPT plugin is regarded for its advanced capabilities. So this plugin harnesses the power of advanced data to provide ChatGPT users with real-time access to advanced computing, mathematics and real-time data. So if you know ChatGPT has a cutoff date which is sometime in September 2021 and it does not have data beyond it. So there are, we have looked at keymate.ai uh, as one way of accessing real-time data with Google. The other one we have looked at currently is uh, uh, the web browser plugin uh, which is with Bing search. The third one is with Wolfram plugin. So I'm just giving you a simil similarity of this, why this would be useful for you. And here's the thing, what this plugin can do. So Wolfram plugin makes ChatGPT smarter by giving it access to power of computation, accurate math, curated knowledge, real-time data visualizations through Wolfram Alpha and Wolfram language. So it delivers broad and deep coverage from chemistry to geography, astronomy, popular culture, nutrition to engineering along with algorithmic code execution. And just a disclaimer here, I would not be covering all the prompts that is possible with this, which itself would be like an entire series. But what I will do is I will cover a few example prompts what this plugin can do and I will try to give you a PDF or an article in which I would be covering all the use cases and you guys could uh, do a self learn of yourself but I would be covering a decent amount of material in this video. So chat GPT for all its remarkable powers is just a text generating material like what its read from the web can't itself be expected to do actual non-trivial computations or to systematically produce correct. This is where we have seen the problem of hallucination with LLMs. So you know LLM hallucinates. It gives you answers and pretends it's right. But as a user, it is your job to double check that data is correct or not. And I think you might have read a news of a lawyer who presented a case on a chat GPT and was penalized for uh, providing some falsification of information. So it is always our job, use chat GPT as a source to generate data, but do some basic search and research that the data is nearly accurate or right, if not as counterintuitive counter questions back to confirm that data is right. But when it is connected to Wolfram plugin, it can do these things. So here's the first thing we can do. How far is uh, Chicago to Tokyo? Or let me ask it another question. How far is Washington from San Jose? Right? We can ask any prompt like this. And don't worry, all these prompts will be provided to you. So you don't have to bother typing them. I will give you, put a PDF out for you so that uh, you can actually try out everything that's possible with this. So we knew it's now confirmed it used uh, the Wolfram plugin and it's giving us the data. So by flight, it would take four hours, 25 minutes. And anyway, the rest of it is not that useful for us. And it also gave us the map for this route and if you want it you can say show in map route by road and air uh, with times and commuting options so let's see if it gives us something so I just wanted it to provide it okay uh, Okay, let's see if it would do this. Okay, so it's using the Wolfram plugin. Yeah, uh, just remember whenever you see an error midway, it's just that the plugin may be overloaded. So just do a retry. It's uh, there are some times when chat GPT errors out. So and uh, there we have already looked at uh, a scenario where you can go and file bugs for most of these issues and they'll fix it. 
okay cool so it gave us some data here travel directions okay so that's what it would give us so let's move on to the next one and basically under the hood it is formulating the query to wolfram then sending that query to computation then deciding what to say based on the results it goes back you can see this in the back and forth play uh, by clicking the wolfram box and looking up uh, you can check chat gpt did not make up anything so what they are mentioning is if you go click on this so you can actually see Wolfram provided this data here for this plugin. Mm. So it's not the data from ChatGPT. And that's it. And now let's see if it can solve some mathematical problems for us, right? So what I'm asking it is solve integral of this number, right? So let's see if it can do some, I think uh, um, it's globally proven math and science is something many of us had trouble with in school or uh, not very good at. So chat GPT is probably something that can help us to uh, overcome this problems and Wolfram plugin is good at doing this problem. So it is able to do it. Cool. So it is giving us this data and once it is done, all we have to do is uh, plot that. Okay. Can you plot it? Okay. I'll ask it. Can you plot it? Cool. So it is also able to do it, but there is a variety of things this can do. It is like very vast and we'll look at couple of things too. So we can also look at some livestock population. So if you are mostly into agrarian economy or you want to research probably for uh, what you are growing, what might be the cost you will get for your produce for this year so this is some data you can do or probably if you are in new if you are planning to enter a new market uh, with some research data this plugin is useful for you so it gives the latest census data and this is what it would give cool so let me ask give me a bar chart for the same data and I think uh, I've tried a couple of countries. It gave me data for all. I don't know which all countries this data is not supported for. It's not mentioned in their documentation. And I haven't hit uh, a negative case where I didn't get data. I will update. Uh, this would still be updated in the documentation. As of now, I don't know where this data is there or uh, where this data for not supported is being listed or if that's the case or it has entire global data i will update you on that i am not really sure on that part so it gave us this data and cool so the next part what we can do is uh, so let me assume we want an algorithmic problem so i will also give you more practice prompts you guys can do it yourself so i'll ask it find a salesman uh, uh, to a, a salesman tour of capital cities in North America or you can do Central America you can do Asia Central Asia if you want uh, um, Africa wherever you want you can do it and it will give you that data and similarly after that uh, the good thing is uh, for most of our PPTs we would like some presentations on this data especially if you are do uh, a startup trying to raise funds or if you are trying to do some corporate presentations about a new market entry so for some of these use cases this is really useful so cool so it gave us this data here and once that is done i would want it to plot a chart for us right so cool this is done once this is done uh it would allow us to submit an input prompt. That's when I would need to wait for it to complete. Yeah, North America seems to be a really large continent. It's like, wow, it's uh, too many cities here, I guess. So cool. So there were 39 cities and let's see if it's going to plot us on a map. And OK, so if you are something into geometry, you can say generate 20 random points in 3d and after that you can ask it to find their convex so while it is in progress i just move on to the next prompt 
so we don't have to waste time just watching it generate data and when you do it if you want to see what all it's doing you can see the request and response you can see the request and response so basically that's how you can interpret what it uh, it can do and similarly when we get into the plugin series we will learn how to use apis to build this to get a response back to most of it so this is like a really useful tool and if you have any service today it should be on chat gpt because uh, as experts are saying it this would be as big as possibly what app store and google play are but that's something that's always an estimate may be right may not be right but what's the harm in it if you can build a plugin and put it out there okay yeah this looks like a large data so it's gonna take some time to plot this so let's see where it's gonna do Okay, so let's wait for it to complete for a few minutes. Yeah, I think uh, there are many more prompts too. And one more thing I wanted to cover here is about the universities. So we are going to do this prompts here. These are the list of prompts we'll be covering. And there's more you can do which is not in this material, which I'll be providing a PDF for you in the end. Make sure you can read it and uh, so we are just evaluating what all each plugin can do. Which plugin works for you that is totally your choice and your business use case. So a plugin that might work for me might not work for you. So I would not be saying it. So it did a plot of this here. So let's move on to generate uh, 20 random points uh, in a 3D. And once that is done, we are going to ask it to do some convex. And similarly, you can do the any uh, geometrical activity you're trying to do, like uh, probably slope of a curve, or if you want to uh, volume of a cube or any of the other problems you want to do, you can do it. And again, like I said, so uh, GPT-4 has this problem where uh, you get a uh, uh, regenerate error and it was not able to generate response so it's probably the api is overloaded so just do regenerate and it should work and yeah it is generating the 20 random points we are in 12 so all these are the coordinates basically. So 3D is this is X axis, this is Y axis, this is Z axis. And it is generating 20 random points for us. And the next thing is uh, uh, find their convex. And if you want to know what convex is, you can look it up, but that would be like a more geometry for you. The idea here is whenever you are trying to do geometry homework, you want to understand it better, you can use it. And some people also say that it affects your creativity using chat GPT to do everything. But uh, that's totally individual call. I would not be commenting on that. Our job is to just demo it to you guys what these plugins are capable of and whether that's good for you or not good for you. That choice is totally yours. So once this this is done, next we are going to do, uh, you guys know what a palindrome is. So the next stuff we are looking at would be palindrome. So palindrome is from, uh, you have a given word. So let's basically say, uh, so let's say here you have A, B, C. This is a A, B, A. This is a palindrome. Whereas A, B, C is not a palindrome. Because if you reverse this word, it is same as the original word. If you reverse this word, it is not same as the original word. So that's basically what palindrome is. So now let's run a prompt related to palindrome. And this is just an example. What words in English are palindrome when you add T to the uh, T to end of them? Cool. So it gave us this one. So now let's see what palindrome will give us. And if you want, you can also ask it to show you the code. I think it most likely returned the Python code for me. So let me also look it up here. And 
these are the last two prompts we'll be executing. So this one is like uh, the probably the best plugin I found and uh, um, in uh, chat GPT for academic purpose. And there are some more good plugins for research, which we'll be covering later on. But this is probably the great plugin for most of the homework stuff. Or if you are doing some uh, trying to understand mathematical concepts. So many of the I think uh, if you go to Khan Academy or any of the other edtech platforms, they are also there was news that some of them are also using GPT-4 to build their uh, stuff. And there was also news about check migrating to GPT-4. So GPT-4 is going to make it big probably in uh, edtech space. And let's see how things go. So let's assume you are planning to apply to universities and you want to know what is the uh, 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 where what Stanford University is or you want to know data about what rank it is, uh, including number of students on end of campus and what is the estimated tuition or you can also ask data on the acceptance rate. Will I be accepted? So if you are uh, into masters, probably criteria may be different um, or if you are applying for probably bachelor's or uh, um, bachelor's, it may be completely different criteria for you. And you might know what's the profiles of people who got accepted, what they did. So if you want to know some of the data, this is a good plugin to do some research. Or if you want to go the traditional way of hiring a consultant to helping you prepare SOPs and other stuff, you can do that too. But just wanted to show you what where this is useful. I think a couple of my friends were using this to do some applications in school and they said it was pretty impressive. So that's why I took this prompt to cover cover it out for you and cool. So it gave the transfer rate, it gave the graduation rate, it gave the undergraduate students and everything. And now let's assume that uh, you want to know how many students in computer science and how to apply, right? So. Or if or you might want to know about history or you want to know about political science, business administration. So whatever you want to do. So, OK, so it does not know about computer science. OK, so it was not able to give that prompt. So let me ask this data and see if it has it. So I wanted it to know that what is the average high and uh, what is the low average and high salaries for graduating students in computer science. Yeah, I don't think it's able to get the data, but it got similar data from labor stats uh, from the Labor Bureau of Statistics, where it gave that, uh, yeah, it seems to be uh, uh, fair. It again depends on geography, probably salaries in San Francisco, New York may be way higher than this. Probably in Midwest, it might be lower. It also depends on the cost of living index at that particular space. And probably if you are looking for this data in Asia, it might be a lot lower or in Europe, this data might be different. So and let's do some query on number systems. So let me ask it some data on what is 535 in Greek numerals. And after that, let's probably ask it in, uh, let's take Roman out and let me do uh, square of that number in decimal. So let's see what it would be. Cool. And let me see if decimal would work. If not, we can go back to what it is. Okay, so it gave us that number in decimal. Let me ask that same number, uh, square of that number in Roman numeral. So it, you should get that too. So yeah, just wanted to show this plugin to you guys. And uh, this was something many people had pinged me. They wanted to know how this plugin would work. So wanted to cover this. 
and i hope this helps see you in the next video with an another uh, chat gpt plugin thank you for joining